Dub Nation. Dub Nation. Time for the real and inside story on Warriors basketball. Curry sides up. Curry drive. Curry flip. Curry good. This is Dub's OT with John Dickinson on KMDR 104.5 and 6.8. Streaming live at twitch.tv slash the sports leader. Back door. <laughs> He was behind the backboard and soared forward to catch the dunk that he had to make the advance. I'm on the decision maker. I rise and hammer. Watch your head down there. Play out of the corner. Oh, what a dog! The spike from Kaminga has the bench going nuts. Yeah, a couple of plays of the night from Jonathan Kaminga as the Warriors do win in Miami. They bounce back game two of the five-game road trip as uh, they win it 113-92 to in Miami. Jonathan Kaminga, 18 points. Clay Thompson, surprise, surprise, back in the starting lineup uh, for Steve Kerr and the Warriors who get a much-needed victory as uh, they are Playing these games fast and furious every other night and then a back-to-back as they'll be in Orlando tomorrow. It is Dubs OT with JD here, KMBR, the sports leader. we got Greg Silver on hand in our San Francisco studios as well as we are live on YouTube, Twitch, and the Twitter X stream as well. Uh, Greg, how are you doing tonight? Uh, we were supposed to do this about three hours ago, but a little bit of a scheduling snafu. Obviously, the Giants game tonight as well as they wrap up uh, spring training, uh, getting ready to head down to San Diego for their opener on Thursday. And so here we are, better late than never, Dubs OT edition. Uh, I'm sure the diehards will be riding with us tonight here as we do this for the for the next hour. Yeah, what's up, JD? Good night to everybody, really, at this point. And I'll be honest, the reason that we did it this way was just to see who really cared about us the most and who was the most devoted. Uh, I mean, that's part of the reason. There was also, you know, having to be a little bit of a jack-of-all-trades, having multiple sports. We are the sports leader, after all, so a little bit of juggling, but hey... Good to see the Warriors go and get a win uh, at a time when any given night they could just let it slip. And, you know, we are on the air at 10 p.m. and we're going to have this in podcast form. So people are going to have their dubs OT. You know, it may not be served as early as they want, but leftovers never hurt. No, never hurt. And uh, yeah, you can join the conversation if you want. Uh, 808 KNBR is the number as always to give us a call or shoot us a text. We can, we can do all of it. We can, we can take the text messages, the calls, the YouTube chat, which uh, I've already seen our buddy CA and Douglas Mike's a couple of diehards. Hello to you here on what day is this? Oh, Tuesday night uh, here, uh, 415-808-5627. And uh, just, you know, some, some general thoughts on, on the game uh, from Miami. You did have Steve Kerr with the, the lineup change, putting Clay Thompson back in for Brandon Pajemski. I know we are going to have a Sounds of Silver segment coming up uh, at the bottom of the hour, but uh, spacing, a little more shooting on the floor. Brandon Pajemski struggled with his shot, so you get a little more shooting on the floor, open things up. And for Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga to get to the bucket, and I, I thought that was really the, the story of the game uh, for the Warriors. It, it, second half, really, but uh, the story of the game was the, the four scores, right? Four, four guys uh, that when you look at this, this Warriors team that you would need to count on uh, on, a, on a given night, giving them some production offensively, uh, they got it. It was, it was Steph and Clay uh, with the, the 45 points between the two of them. But then it was Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga who had 35 between the two of them. And it's 80 all told for those four players and there just been so few nights where the the top four guys basically that the Warriors count on for offense all are productive on on the same night uh and you know they had that tonight and uh yeah Clay Thompson had been on a a heater coming off the bench so Steve Kerr puts it back in the starting lineup and it, it helps open things up and the Warriors really I thought as the game went on Greg they pushed the tempo uh, it, it was really that usual Miami slog, and, and look, there there aren't a, a lot of great, uh, you know, grandiose, 
you know, opinions off of this game, to be perfectly honest. I mean, the Heat, in many ways, did the Warriors a favor. You know, Jimmy Butler comes up ill. It was kind of the quintessential Heat culture game, right? Uh, no, Heat culture basically means nobody plays, and they still compete and, and sometimes win. That's basically the definition of Heat culture at this point, right? It's It's how many guys can we not have play of our main guys and then still compete? only to mostly lose, but sometimes win. And the Warriors got a full dose of that at Chase Center back in December because the Heat had like eight players and they beat the Warriors by 18 or something like that. It was one of the ugliest games that the, that the Warriors had played uh, among the many ugly games that the Warriors had played at Chase Center this season. But no Jimmy Butler, no Hero, no Duncan Robinson, no Richardson, no Kevin Love, even for, for good measure. And so the Heat do the Warriors a favor. And... The Warriors tonight in South Florida did what they couldn't do three months ago in San Francisco, which is take advantage. And and you know, it took them to the third quarter. But uh, in the third quarter and in the second half, they were able to push the pace, kind of wear Miami down. And and really, Greg, it, it became uh, a night where you look at just the talent on each end. And the Warriors had a lot more offensive prowess on the court and uh, as they kept putting it to Miami it was a night where Miami just couldn't couldn't keep up so box checked job well done but uh, you know again this one in in many ways was tailor-made at least it should have been tailor-made for the Warriors you know 10-12 hours ago when when guys were coming up on the injury report not not available yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have any kind of grand reaction to it either, but it is nice from a Warrior perspective that Stephen Curry can get 17 points on three of 10 from three and seven fifteen shooting overall, like nothing all that special from him. And it's still survivable for the Warriors and, and comfortably survivable at that because Clay Thompson was on one tonight, a plus 25. So not just being able to make shots, but he was kind of locked in all around. And I really liked your tweet where you said the four most important players and the ones you would hope are the top contributors and Steph Clay Wiggins Kaminga all had really good nights and yeah, the heat were undermanned. Like again, won't react too much to it, but to see those four contribute big, I think it shows that the Warriors showed up and did what they were supposed to do, which is make that a comfortable game. And uh, we didn't actually get too much into this because we didn't have a on air show in the last game. But for Sounds of Silver, there was the Draymond Green quote about not giving a damn about the Rockets. I kind of get where he's coming from on that. Like, the Warriors really need to worry about themselves because if they're just thinking, oh, let's survive and get into this 10 slot, well, guess what? You're going to get bounced either way. So I actually didn't take too much of that quote. Uh, And I do want to get back to you in a second, but we actually had somebody call in who is no surprise. And he was really glad that the schedule shook out the way it did. So uh, what do you say we get to Drew down? All right, let's get to Drew down and Tracy joining. Of course, Drew down's going to be here uh, with, with the, the uh, 10 o'clock show start here after the, the four 30 tip uh, drew down. What, what's on your mind tonight? You're on KMBR. Hey, what's up, JD? Yeah, I was telling Greg, yeah, Tuesday night is my uh, my bowling night at 7 o'clock, so I was <laughs> kind of right. happy that uh, I didn't have to sweat the fourth quarter, you know, and then uh, when I got home, you know, I checked the Twitter, and I was kind of happy to see that you guys were uh, were online, so that, that, that worked out for me. Um, but just a, a, a big road win. You know, I know Miami was missing players and all that, but we've seen time and time again where this team has gone up against, you know, the teams with, with, with missing players, whether it's Memphis, Miami earlier, and, and they couldn't. You know, they couldn't close the deal, so they did exactly what they were supposed to do. Uh, you know, shout out to uh, um, Steve Kerr. I know he, he's, he's received a lot of criticism lately. Some of it I feel like justified, but, he, you know, he made the uh, adjustment tonight. He said, hey, my, they're probably going to uh, focus on Curry. Let's get Clay in there. Let's get some spacing. And, and Clay responded with one of his best games. So, uh, you know, shout out, shout out Kerr for, uh, for making that change. Um, I thought, you know, J.K. and Wiggins, I, I think those two guys, they're so crucial to this team's success with their versatility, you know, on offense and on defense. Um, I thought, you know, J.K. was great. Wiggins was, you know, he was okay in the first half, but I thought to start the third, I thought he was really good. You know, they had a, a three blocks between them two. So um, I think, yeah, if those two can – we really need those two guys to, uh, you know, to contribute at a high level if this team is going to have any chance of not just making the play. And obviously Houston's on their heels, but if they want to, you know, win a couple games in the play and, and, and uh, you know – get to a playoff series. So, you know, shout out uh, JK and Wiggins. I thought Draymond on defense, I know we had five fouls, but 
I thought he was, I thought Dre was, uh, he didn't score a lot, but I thought on, you know, on defense, I thought Dre made a lot of great plays, cleaning up a lot of mistakes. Um, obviously Clay, you know, I thought Clay was great, made a ton of big shots. Uh, the bench tonight was kind of, eh, it was kind of meh. You know, Looney, I thought Looney played pretty good in his minutes, obviously with no TJD. Uh, you know, Looney's the ultimate team guy, ultimate soldier. He doesn't sulk. You know, he never has to get ready because he stays ready. He has six boards. I thought, you know, I thought he made an impact. And then Moody. Hello. Oh, we lost, we lost Drew Down. Well, some good, good thoughts there, Drew Down. Thanks for, thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. One of the regulars chime in here. Dubs OT with JD on, on the sports leader. But uh, yeah, look, if this team's going to have any shot, at at making a run, and I think making a run means getting into the first round of the playoffs. I think that safely uh, can be defined as making a run uh, for for this team. It, it is going to be Wiggins and Kaminga both playing well, along with Steph and Clay both playing well. Like like the template in each of the last two wins for the Warriors, going back to last week against Memphis before they dropped the, the games to Indiana and Minnesota. It 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 really has been. You know, at least three guys, you know, two over twenty. At least three pushing twenty, and, and tonight you've got basically four right there on the on the brink of of twenty. But it it really does. It it can't just be Steph. It can't just be Steph and Kaminga. There's got to be a couple of other players that that come along for the ride there. If this team's gonna gonna maximize, uh, you know, the remaining under three weeks of the, the regular season, plus a, a play in game or two to, to try and steal somebody's spot basically uh, to get into the, the Western conference playoffs and the, and the round of eight in the West and, and maybe have a shot at Denver or OKC. Uh, but it, it, it will take both of them. And, and yeah, I, you know, yeah, you give Kerr credit. I, I found it interesting. I know we'll get to this in, in sounds of silver found it interesting that it doesn't sound like the clay Thompson as a starter thing is, necessarily going to be a permanent thing i i sort of thought when i saw the lineup come out that it was just steve basically saying all right we're going to ride out clay for the rest of the year just put him in trust steph trust draymond trust clay kaminga's obviously been in there wiggins you know you're you're ride or die with him at this point uh and so you know you just you just see what that group has got and and how far they can take it and wherever it ends it ends and and then you start to you know get into this off season as far as some of the big time decisions that that they're going to have to make as to you know whether or not it's even feasible feasible really to to reasonably contend or compete next year because you know Greg we've talked about this a lot and it doesn't necessarily need to be the the overarching theme of the remainder of this hour because we have discussed it uh, so many different times here the last couple of weeks but uh, you know this as tough as some of these games have been of late for the Warriors these last couple of weeks and as bleak as it tends to look after the losses next year could be worse (laughs) depending upon the direction that they go. And so, you know, at at some point, you know, we don't know what the future holds obviously with Clay Thompson. So I I was a little surprised to, to hear Steve Kerr say, that it was kind of a, not not necessarily a one night thing, but it's something that that wouldn't necessarily be permanent as far as Clay being in there for what amounts to the remaining eleven games plus if they end up in a couple of play in, play in tournament games. Yeah, you know, it was interesting to hear uh, Kerr's perspective on it tonight, and I don't know. I mean, I, I think that not making it permanent didn't surprise me terribly, just in the sense of. Nothing has been stable lineup wise this year. Like they have had no stability. They've had 20 something different iterations of the starting lineups. So I think Clay Thompson, if he continues to play well, probably will start more and certainly close more than not down the stretch. But at the same time, if Pajemski kind of has a couple of nice games, even if he's not scoring like crazy, I could see them going back to the Steph Pajemski Wiggins Kaminga Draymond lineup that served them really well uh, during the stretch that they did play really well for this year. Uh, But I do agree with you very much on the front that it could be very much worse next year. And I think that even seeing signs of a little bit of Steph Curry fatigue and not being able to afford playing 40 minutes, that's kind of a sign of it's not going to get any easier in that regard next year. And that is the nucleus of your squad. 
Yeah, and, and Steph ended up with 31 minutes tonight, and uh, he was 3 of 10 from 3, 17.64. 31 minutes tonight, but when when Steve put him back in the game in the fourth quarter, uh, it, it, I look, I said, oh, he because I, I think if he had finished the game, it would have been about 34, and, and my first thought was, oh, so he can play 34 minutes tonight if if you need to, to make sure that this game doesn't get uh, screwy, and, and the Warriors basically put the, put the game away. Uh, you know, early enough in the fourth quarter to where you got to the midpoint and, and they pretty much had it on, on cruise control. Big second half for the Warriors in this one, 60 to 37. Uh, the Warriors outscore the Heat uh, in the second half to, to win it 113 to, to 92. And uh, look, the one thing this team's done uh, is they've played well away from Chase Center. And so they, they continue to, to do that. Uh, one quick note, we'll, we'll save, uh, I'll, I'll break off from this, uh, from our fun with numbers segment, which will be coming up later. But uh, this was an interesting one. I'll, we'll, we'll give it to you now uh, as far as the Warriors. They have six games this year on the road where they've won by 20 or more. Six games. That that is that puts them in the category of you want to you want to name the other team. Do you want to try to guess the other teams that have uh, that many or more twenty plus point road wins? This Boston season? for sure. Boston is a. There are three teams tied. The Warriors have six. There are three teams tied with seven road wins of twenty or more points. There is one other team that has six. So that that's your top five. Uh, in, in, and yes, the Warriors have six. Boston is one of the three teams with seven 20 plus point uh, margins of victory on the road. Uh, feel free to take uh, another Cleveland? stab there. No, no, okay. not Cleveland. I know they were hot at one not point. Cleveland. A I mean, couple what about of Western Denver? Com- that's that's couple- the other obvious one. Not Denver. Oh, not Denver. Believe it or not. No, not Denver. Uh, the other two are Western Conference teams, New Orleans. And Minnesota, New Orleans and Minnesota, along with Boston, have the most 20 plus point road wins in the NBA this season. The Warriors have six and Oklahoma City has six. So it's a pretty good team. All teams that are significantly better than the Warriors in terms of record uh, and and then the Warriors who, for whatever reason, they were and even I mean, even some of their. You know they, they've played really well. Like the Warriors played well in Minnesota the other night. They didn't win, uh, but they they played you know much much more competitively uh, in in that game than than some of their you know home wins. To be honest, they've had some uglier home wins than the game that they lost in in Minnesota. Uh, so yeah, the Warriors only four of those games last year. Uh, by the way, in in the twenty twenty two twenty three season. So yeah, for whatever reason. Uh, there's there's an urgency uh, away from home. Uh, I think you know the cycle of the season for the Warriors has basically been. Be- I think because they were so dreadful last year uh, away from Chase Center and the the eight and thirty three record that they had last year, there was such an emphasis on being better uh, on the road and and just what an embarrassment that that eight and 33 was. And so really the, the cycle of the entire season, going back to that, that early stretch where they had seven of the first nine on the road and they, they came back six and three uh, and, and, you know, there, the whole cycle was they would go on the road, play well, come home. And really all year after the Warriors would play well on the road, they would come home thinking, Hey, this team really can get on a run. This team can 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 really pa- start padding their record. And every single time from that very first long home stand in the middle of November when they lost five of six, they've just kneecapped themselves when they when they've come back home. And then they go on the road, and you're thinking the opposite. Oh, this team's gonna just completely crater. And then they would win a bunch of games on the road, come back. Oh. Time for this team to get on a run doesn't happen. Why? Because they they can't uh, win consistently, uh, really against against anybody at at home. So uh, we'll see how it ultimately shakes out. But yeah, the the, the efforts have been uh, at a much greater level for this team when they have been on the road. And I mean, you just look at the the two Miami games, right? Miami basically 
doesn't have a bunch of guys in both of these games and the Warriors get smoked at home and it's kind of the same thing a couple of months later on the road and and they they handle business and, and so that's just been for whatever reason the the team that they've been uh, this season. So 808 KMBR is the number if you want to give us a call or shoot us a text. We've got uh, quite a few uh, filing in uh, the YouTube chat. We'll get into that. Sounds of Silver uh, is coming up as well. And uh, we've got some other nuggets here for our, our fun with numbers segment. Uh, as we keep things rolling, Warriors do get a win. Bounce back victory on the road, 113 to 92. It is KMBR 1045 and 680, the sports leader.
Did you hear something? Yeah, like a swoosh. Yeah. Dubs OT presents the sounds of silver. Streaming live on YouTube at KNBR 1045. The Heat are going to stay in that zone. Spolster's going to say, all right, the second unit, how well do they dissect the zone? Well, that's the zone buster right there. Clay Thompson dropping in a three. It was perfect because they screened the zone, and they just didn't have enough defenders on that side. So Warriors had numbers there, and it's just about Clay avoiding one defender. He's got a good look. Yeah, a lot of good looks for the Warriors in this one, and uh, Clay Thompson was was burying him uh, as he ended up with 28, 6 of 14 from three. Warriors beat the Heat, 113 to 92. It's Dubs OT, uh, a better late than never edition here tonight. Uh, KMPR, the sports leader. Uh, this thing will be out, uh, obviously, tomorrow in, in podcast form. Uh, appreciate everybody. Before we get to uh, Greg back in the studio and uh, the sounds of silver, we look at uh, some of the comments here on the YouTube chat and uh, did did want to you know give a shout out to a lot of the regulars, including CA. CA was one of the, the first first guys in uh, on the in the chat tonight. Uh, what Douglas Mikes, our buddy Douglas Mike, San Jose Jazz fan, the third uh, chiming in here as as well. Mickey D, a lot, a lot of people uh, joining us in this one. There are a few people that were ready to roll at about seven o'clock that said live at 10. WTF, yikes, the hell's going on, guys? Uh, but yeah, well, we were supposed to be uh, live at 7 o'clock, but some things got uh, shifted around. and uh, so Tomorrow, we're we are definitely live. Yeah. Probably before we're making the game. Up, we're, yeah, we're making, it up, we're making it up for tomorrow, because tomorrow we're probably going to be on at about 6.15, and we're going to go all the way till 9. So, hey, we're, <laughs> whatever you didn't get tonight, we're going to make up for it tomorrow and, and Friday as, as well. And Saturday with just dubs. And, I mean, there's basically a game every day for the next three weeks. So We may have the Greg Silver pregame show if Tolbert and Copes ends and Warriors are still rolling. That's right. The old Greg, the old Greg Silver bridge show. <laughs> the old Greg Silver bridge show. Looking forward to that. Uh, as well. Uh, let's uh, you know, Alpha Nickelberry, a couple of comments here before we go back to Greg. Good win. Still playing for 10th at this point. Lakers are in a winning streak. Yeah, the Lakers were down 19 in the closing minutes in Milwaukee, and they went on a 26-7 run. The game went to double overtime, and the Lakers ended up winning without LeBron at Milwaukee. So, yeah, the Lakers now, that was win number 40 for them they're 40 and 32 so yeah it's it basically the warriors are i mean outside chance of ninth but they're at this point just playing to keep the rockets off their heels and uh who knows uh the lakers now with four straight wins uh they're two back of the suns two back of the kings kings basically have tiebreakers against everybody uh at this point uh, they got thumped tonight the kings did uh by the mavs but those two teams are going to play again uh, in a couple of days in Sacramento. Uh, so yeah, Dallas has won five in a row. They are now sixth and inching closer to fifth and even fourth, believe it or not, as the Clippers have struggled winning four uh, of their last 10. So let's get to sounds of silver uh, back in the studio. Greg silver. What, uh, what do you got tonight? We got actually, interestingly, I felt like a lot of different people answered the same question so it gave me a little bit of a grab bag and got to choose what i wanted i had plenty of time to do it it's one of the rare pluses of a 10 o'clock show there was no rush on the sounds <laughs> of silver front a little too much time but we'll start with just a nice basic recap one this is 50 seconds it's steve kerr at the podium and he was asked what changed for the dubs in the second half much better uh, level of uh, competitiveness in the second half. Uh, I thought they outcompeted us in the first half, and um, 
you know, they were making it difficult for us to get the ball across half court. Uh, they were playing really, really hard, and we didn't match that. And the second half, I thought we uh, flipped that around. I thought Wiggs' uh, defense on uh, Terry Rozier second half was uh, one of the keys to the game. I thought J.K. Uh, really did a, a great job competing, coming up with some rebounds and loose balls. And, uh, and great to have Loon back in the lineup. You know, Loon it, it represents um, – a lot of what we're about, you know, just the professionalism and, and um, staying ready. And we've missed having him out on the floor. And uh, it's great great to see Loon step in and, and play well and help us get a win. Yeah, I, I know uh, it, he really helped him. I, I, I thought the Warriors were competing in the first half. Uh, it, it just it was, it, you know, they were a little scattered with the turnovers early in the game. And, you know, the Heat, were pretty woeful offensively uh, early. Uh, Warriors got up eighteen to ten, and then the Heat just—I think it was—it is kind of that quintessential Heat culture game where they just they keep fighting and scratching and and you know it was a little telling to me in the first half just how close the game was, Greg, and that it kind of made me think, man, like it just was one of those examples of how hard this Warriors team has to play even against under talented teams. And then even against those under talented teams, when they're playing pretty well, the game's still close. So I, I think you know they they had to try to find another gear. And I think based on the talent level disparity tonight overall, when they hit that gear in the second half, the Heat really couldn't couldn't stay with them. And you know they they were able to to build a little bit of a cushion and and you know take take the game over, take control. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, I did like looking at the fourth quarter box score, just how evenly spread out it was for the Warriors because that was really the only time it didn't look like they had to just dog it and fight so hard just to get advantages. It was nice to see Wiggins get a bucket. You had Kaminga with four points and catching a big lob down the stretch. Draymond even scored. Stephen Clay had five apiece. Uh, I'm not going to really count the Moody and Guy Santos, but uh, Looney had two off that nice dunk that uh, Steph zipped the pass inside for the Looney dunk. That was one of my favorite plays of the game. But uh, there's no doubt about it that the first half was much more of a struggle. And yeah, it was like, oh, Steph Curry looks OK, but how is he going to look in the second half? And is he going to have to play the four fourth quarter? And uh, it was nice to see him get a lot of fourth quarter minutes. You know, he ended with seven, but take away the last three uh, when everybody came out of the game. So. Uh, good to see that. And uh, speaking of Steph Curry, let's go to the next cut. He talks about some of the defensive adjustments that they made tonight against the Heat. It's about 45 seconds. Playing a little bit more physical. We kept getting beat on back cuts. And even whether they scored or not, it was causing our defense to have to react. And then they would open up uh, either three for somebody in a corner or uh, – it's just a breakdown that would, you know, give them space. I think we got a little bit more discipline in the second half. It's the NBA. There's so much talent out there. Obviously, they're missing a lot of guys. Um, but if you give, you know, them confidence and, you know, their patterns start to, you know, attack you, that's when they're they're lethal. I don't care who's out there. So we were very much more disciplined in the second half to keep things in front of us, make them take tough shots, and you live with it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I do think they were disciplined in the second half. I thought in the first half they were fortunate that Miami is so offensively challenged, as our buddy Regulator pointed out, that uh, that the Warriors didn't get burned by it as much as maybe they could have on another night and as much as we've seen them get burned by some teams that do shoot the three ball uh, better than, than this Miami team could. But that being said, the compete was, ratch was ratcheted up and the overall, uh, you know, execution I think was was ramped up as well. And you do what you got to do to try to earn a win. And, and the Warriors were, were were able to do that because the one thing you know is you're going to have to compete regardless of who's out there uh, for Miami or not out there for Miami. So uh, again, the Warriors learned that lesson as we talked about in the first segment back uh, in December. But yeah, uh, offensively challenged teams uh, are those are. Those are, you know, those are teams that uh, give the Warriors a little bit more margin for error that uh, I think, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, they've they've needed a little bit more of that margin for error this season to, to win. 
Well, and you can hear it in the cut right there that Steph was pretty aware that it's a talented league and you guys have gotten burned by under talented teams more than just a couple times this year. So I thought that was uh, pretty candid and humble and mellow. And another person that spoke pretty truthfully in the post game was Clay Thompson. And I actually really liked all of Clay Thompson's post game. I thought he was in a good mood. He seemed calm, but also was pretty honest and aware of the situation. Like I think he on some level understands that this win alone doesn't really mean a ton, but Hey, it was good to go out there and get a rhythm and score 28 and uh, really have settled into this new role, but we're still 10th place and we got to play better. So I really liked this Clay Thompson cut. I thought it was just very honest uh, when he was asked what changed for the Warriors in the fourth quarter. Let's hear what he had to say. I think uh, we played well as far as not letting them get downhill and in the paint repeatedly. I mean, Bam is a really good player. It helps when they're not, when they're missing, you know, their elite scores and Jimmy and Hero. So that obviously, that obviously was a big reason why. But other than that, um, get Draymond great credit too. I mean, he made it hard on Bam. Bam made some really tough jumpers on him, but uh, Draymond's such a great post defender. He uh, He's hard to go against for, you know, 35 to 40 minutes a night. Yeah, I, I mean, it, look, if 24 points, 21 shots, you'll you'll take that. Uh, I mean, if, if you're defending, especially when he's the, the number one option, <laughs> essentially. Uh, and, you know, nobody shot it well for Miami. Uh, but again, you, you get credit, 8 of 33 from three. Like I said, there thought there were some open ones early in the game that were missed. Thought the Warriors did make it harder on him later. Didn't allow Miami to get to the free throw line. And, and all in all, I mean, this does go down as one of the better Warrior defensive efforts uh, on the season, despite uh, the the competition and who was actually out there for for Miami. I mean, just one of six times this season, Greg, that the Warriors have held anybody under a hundred. Uh, surprise, surprise! They've won every single game uh, when they've held uh, the opponent uh, under a hundred. Now six and I actually am a little bit surprised. Season. Like it seems like with the way this season has gone, they'd be three and three with a mark like that. No, it's the games where they've had 130 or more that I think have been the the ones where it's basically been 500. I don't I don't have that off the top of my Steph head. Steph scores but. 43 plus and they have a losing record. I don't I don't know if that's true either, but that's what it feels like. Well, yeah, and then the other one was I mean, there's been what about 15 games that where they've had three players with 20 or more, and I think they're they're 10 and five or 10 and six maybe and. In, in those games, uh, which, you know, you'd, you'd think because this team's lost so many games when they haven't quite had that, that when they do get it, they'd win. But uh, but yeah, that that hasn't necessarily been the case uh, of, of late. But yeah, six and oh, when they hold uh, hold a team under 100 for whatever that's worth. Fourth time they've done it on the road. Uh, but even when they even when they do that at home. Uh, they're they're able to win, but yeah, you think of some of the high, I mean, some of the just ridiculous high scoring game losses that the that the Warriors have had. I mean, the 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 back to back games to Sacramento and the Lakers back in in January those those games come to mind. Uh, Oklahoma City, uh, a couple of games against OKC, but the you know they won the one forty what one forty one to one thirty nine game back in in November. They've had some some high scoring games against them that that have gone the other way. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, it, this team's uh, for a good chunk of the year, especially when they didn't have Draymond, was a was a really bad defensive team. They haven't been a great defensive team the last couple of weeks, uh, and but tonight again, opponent the damned. They uh, figured out a way to uh, get the job done and, and come up with enough defense to win comfortably on the front end of a back-to-back. Uh, we got fun with numbers coming up here between now and, and 11 o'clock and, and some numbers on how good the Warriors have been in the first game of back-to-backs. They've, they've been pretty good this year at, at getting the jump uh, in front of uh, game number two, and they'll be in Orlando tomorrow. Uh, wh- what do we have uh, remaining? One more, one more cut from one Steph. more cut, and I mean, we all knew I was going to fall into the trap. If you put Kavon Looney at the podium, you know I got to give him at least one. So Looney had a couple of nice quotes. 
Uh, he talked about Clay Thompson and how what it means to the team when he's playing well. But the one I wanted to play is about 30 seconds, and it's Looney talking about the matchup with Bam. And I just love this guy and his professionalism and his gratitude to be out there playing. It was good to see him get some minutes tonight. So here's what he had to say about Bam out of bio. No, we don't get the matchup uh, often. So, uh, you know, it was fun uh, playing against him. Uh, you know, you know, he's pretty athletic. You know, he's a great ball handler. has great feel. And uh, he was hitting a lot of his mid-range today. Uh, you know, it's pretty tough to stop. And he's shooting high arc shots and different things like that. And defensively, you know, he's a, one of the best in the league. Uh you know, uh, garden, uh, protecting the rim, garden on the perimeter. Uh, he's a pretty elite. So, uh, you know, he definitely gave us problems definitely in that first half. He took us out of our rhythm a lot in that first half. And, uh, you know, he's a special player for a reason. Yeah, no, definitely a special player. Hard when he's the first and kind of only option, though, I think. Uh, and because he is somebody that, and, and you know, he got Draymond, as Clay mentioned, a couple of times. But Draymond got him a, a couple of times. And, and, you know, I, I think that that obviously helped uh, the, the Warriors prevail. Hey, Steve Kerr said Kavan was going to get his opportunity uh, at some point. Uh, I think we both thought it was going to take an injury. Uh, and you don't want to see Trace Jackson Davis unavailable here at a point where he's continuing to, to develop and, and has already had, I think, a pretty, pretty great rookie season. But uh, Kavan was was ready. Up, up to the challenge, and uh, I, you know, the Warriors are going to need, uh, I, I think, a, a little bit of everybody here between now and, and the end of the year with so many of these games coming rapid fire uh, here. You know, the back to back tomorrow, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, another back to back. It's it's every other day or a back to back between now uh, and the end of the season, which is is coming up now. What just nineteen days away uh, when the Warriors wrap things up. Uh, when they take on the Utah Jazz uh, at Chase. And where will they be? Well, we're about to find out here. Uh, but they do, for a night, stave off the Rockets, uh, who did win uh, last night and have won, what is it, nine in a row? Rockets have nine, won nine in a row. In a row to get to 36 and 35, and, and now within a game of, of the Warriors. And those two teams are going to play next week in, in Houston, a week from Thursday. Uh, the Warriors do have the tiebreaker against the Rockets. They've already beaten them a couple of times this season. Uh, and so, you know, that becomes a game that's that's pretty must win, I think, for, for Houston. You'd, you'd like to be a game up when you go in there. Uh, if you're the Warriors, I think that that should be uh, a, a goal. You know, if you're a game up when you go in there and you win that one, you're in good shape because they basically got to beat you by three at that point over the final week and a half of the season. So, you know, be a game up and win that one. And I think they're going to be fine as, as far as, uh, you know, winding up with that, that 10 spot. But uh, <laughs> there's no doubt that, it, you know, if this team is going to find their way into the actual, you know, 16 game playoff uh, first round series, they're going it, to, it's going to be a wild run. Uh, not only to the finish line, but potentially having to beat the Lakers, likely on the road, and then who knows? Maybe, maybe Kevin Durant and Devin Booker are waiting for you uh, on the back end of that, or or maybe another trip to Sacramento could be waiting on the back end of that uh, with uh, another uh, elimination game uh, for a, a spot uh, in the tournament. But it's all very jumbled up uh, and. The four spot has come down to earth to where the teams that are basically in the mix for eight, seven, six, and five uh, are also in the mix for four uh, at, at this point, uh, as there's just two games uh, separating uh, six and four in the loss column, two and a half games total between uh, the Suns and eight and, and basically the Clippers at this point who are, who are fourth. So there could be, uh, some jostling that uh, I, I didn't think was going to be uh, the case here just a couple of weeks ago. It looked like the Clippers had enough separation to, to basically be uh, in the top four. All right. Good stuff, Greg, for from you. Sounds of silver. Let's uh, go ahead and pause here again briefly. We'll come back. Uh, we'll get some final comments from the YouTube chat. We'll have some fun with numbers and uh, we'll set the scene for tomorrow. As uh, we'll be back uh, right about 6.15, 6.30 and uh, going all the way into uh, the 9 o'clock hour 
uh, here on on the Sports Leader. So uh, 113 to 92, the final. We'll be back. Final segment straight ahead. Dubs OT with JD here on the Sports Leader. KNBR, the Sports Leader. This is Dubs OT with JD. Time now for fun. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> with numbers. No, I'm just having fun. On KNBR 1045 and 680. Streaming live on KNBR.com and the KNBR app. Shot clock at five. The girls chested up on Steph. Shot clock at two. Curry in the lane with the left hand to bank it home. How skilled is that guy? Steph is just not taking no for an answer. That defender is in his jersey. Somehow he shed him, got around him, and it's just rely on your float game. And two of Steph's 19 Warriors win, 113.92. Dubs OT with JD here on the Sports Leader. And final segment is a well, truncated edition tonight in our Better Late Than Never Dubs OT show here from 10 until 11, but back tomorrow in the six o'clock hour following the Warriors and the Magic. And so they'll have the back to back. Uh, some fun with numbers coming up here in just a second. I did want to get to, Greg, a couple of comments here. And you know, we didn't have a question of the night tonight, but had we had a question of the night tonight, uh, it would have been in all likelihood should Clay Thompson remain a starter and uh tony smith beat us to the punch on that in the youtube chat uh right as we got things rolling here in the 10 o'clock hour the starting lineup should remain as is uh what are your thoughts on that i know steve kurt didn't commit to it but i gotta think 
against the length of the magic that the Warriors are going to stick with Clay in the starting lineup and want to have that shooting out there to help space the floor. I think there's two sides to it for me because I am right there with you that tomorrow against a lengthy magic team and you saw the positive effect of what starting a Clay Thompson can do, which is it spaces the floor. They're not so zeroed in on Curry to start the game. There's not as much pressure on Kaminga to get going, scoring right away. I think you start Clay Thompson on a back-to-back. That being said, for every single game rest of the year, I don't know. We've seen the benefits of starting Pajemski at times too. And what it looks like when, you know, even if he's not scoring to go and take charges and be a little bit of a pest out there. And then you got Clay Thompson coming in against backups who may be more athletic, but I mean, Clay can punk backups. We've seen it happen many times this year, and he's been a great spark off the bench when you're able to get Curry some rest and not have your team just nosedive. So I would like to see Clay start tomorrow. I think you can throw him in there a good handful of times, but I'm not in the camp of you got to just go right back to it because there's been so much lineup inconsistency all year. The starting lineup of Steph Pajemski, Wiggins, Kaminga, Draymond has provided more stability than many, many other units. So I'm not ready to just turn the other cheek on that and say, well, now you got to abandon it. 42-29. The Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, Jonathan Kaminga, Draymond Green group outscored the Heat tonight. That courtesy of of Anthony Slater, who wrote about that uh, in The Athletic. 12 minutes together, 42-19 the margin. So plus 23 in a game that the Warriors win by 21. I, I hear you on the rest of the season. I, I don't think you necessarily have to commit to it between now and, and the end of the season for every single game. But I do think tomorrow you put Clay Thompson back out there in Orlando and, and it, and it is a game to game kind of a thing. Maybe you go back to it in Charlotte and against San Antonio to, to close out the, the trip on, on Friday and Sunday, but I'd have Clay uh, in there tomorrow uh, again and just kind of, Hey, it worked tonight. You got to try to get as many of these games as you possibly can. Uh, the the Magic have, I think, as tall a starting lineup and long a starting lineup as anybody. So I'd, I'd put uh, Clay Thompson back out there uh, again for tomorrow. All right, final couple of minutes here. I uh, want to get a couple of comments here in the YouTube chat and also just give uh, some shout outs. Otis Bird the third, appreciate you. Uh, it was nice having Looney out there tonight. Felt kind of bad for him when he was taken out of the rotation. Uh, you and Steve Kerr both, Otis. I, I think, I mean, gosh, you've heard Steve talk about uh, the the admiration and respect that he has for Kavon Looney and uh, Otis, not the only one. CA, something a little nostalgic about Loon hauling in boards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's had the ability to really impact, as we've said, uh, really important games. I mean, he was a monster a couple of years ago against Memphis in particular in that second round series. We've joked, and it's not even a joke. I mean, Kevon Looney was the second best Warriors player in the first round series last year against Sacramento. It was Steph and everything that he did. And then again, uh, you know, nobody could hit a shot basically for the Warriors. I mean, there were others that that contributed and yeah, Looney did make some key plays, but, but Looney and the job that he did against Sabonis and, and, and all of that. I mean, he was uh, crazy as it sounds. Draymond gets suspended for a game and, and Looney starting without him and, and, and making things happen uh, and, and helping the Warriors get back on, on track in, in that series uh, as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of people felt good for, for Looney, uh, to to be off, uh, Douglas Mike's people on the clay train could be off it as soon as tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's the reality. The reality for Clay is, you know, as well as he's played of late, he could be three for eighteen tomorrow, and one for ten from three. I mean that's just that's just what it is. We had a few people, Fozzy, Regulator, Drew Down, all, all trying to guess uh, those teams that had the most twenty point 
road victories uh, on the season. So yeah, always fun to be playing the the home version uh Dubs OT uh here on the Sports Leader Rock and New Era 84. Uh appreciate you. Uh he said Kings got their butts whipped. Yeah, uh Sacramento did tonight. But again, they they play again tomorrow or they play again Friday them and the Mavs. Weird deal. Kings and Mavs play tonight and then play again in Sacramento Friday and then Dallas and then goes home before coming back to the Bay, like because of the whole uh, games getting switched around. The Warriors were supposed to play in Dallas on Tuesday. So I think Dallas plays in Sacramento Friday. Then they go home, I believe, and play Sunday. Then they come back out to the Bay to play. It's basically what the Warriors have to do uh, when the Warriors will have the five-game trip, come back home for the one game against Houston, and then go right back out, or one game against Dallas, then go back uh, on the road and and play Houston and and, and Dallas uh, again. And so, yeah, they don't play, as uh, Otis pointed out, uh, again until Friday. Uh, Jimbo says only one bad shot for Clay uh, in this game. And so, yeah, the, 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 you know, it, it, those shots are always... Uh, you know, the, the shot selection is always a thing uh, as well. And so that's, you know, a big part of, of what's going on there. And tonight I thought he did take uh, good shots. And then, yeah, Andis Brown, uh, Orlando hasn't played since Saturday. Talk about an advantage with the Warriors on a back-to-back. Yeah, there aren't too many of those where it's basically a plus, what is that, a plus three, right? They have, yeah, plus three rest advantage. The Warriors have a zero in terms of nights off in between and the magic have a a plus three uh, rest advantage there uh, as they try to even that up. I know typically uh, they try to even that up. So I'm sure there was a game earlier in the year where the Warriors had some semblance of of an advantage over another team. All right. Some quick fun with numbers here uh, in the final couple of minutes. Warriors have won 11 of the last 14 on the road, 19 and 15 on the road. One and one on that trip. We talked about the Dubs being six and zero now, and they hold opponents under a hundred. They split the season series with the Heat, uh, and they have won eight of their last nine first games of back to backs. Eight of the last nine, the Warriors have won the first game of a back to back, including four in a row. Uh, they are eleven and four the first game of of a back to back. Thirty one assists now. Twenty two and nine in games where they have thirty or more assists. And uh, the Warriors shot better than 50% for the 21st time this season, 19-2 and two when they do that. Uh, and the Warriors also 16-2 uh, and two, uh, when they shoot above 50 and have the, the 30 assists. That is telling an indicator of, of if the Warriors are playing well as anything. And uh, yeah, uh, Clay Thompson started for the first time in six games, the 27th 20-point game of the season. He's been in double figures 15 in the last 17. Chris Paul got to the uh, career steals marker of 2,600, uh, which joins John Stockton, Jason Kidd as the only players to have uh, as many steals uh, in, in NBA history. Uh, and uh, Steph Curry continued to pad his lead with 315 makes from three-point range. Uh, we talked about the 20-plus the point road wins on the road. Uh one other quick note here uh, on the history of the Miami Orlando back to back the Warriors 17 times, Greg have played at Miami and Orlando in a back to back. They have swept both. You want to take a guess at how many times they've swept both all time. One. Five actually. Oh, Believe it or not. Wow. Five, look at that. Yeah, five sweeps, six splits, and have been swept six times. So it's basically it's been pretty even when you think about it. They've swept some, they've they've been swept in some, uh, and and they've 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 split some as well. Uh the last time the Warriors won both games in a Miami Orlando back to back, the 73 and nine year. Uh, in 2016, uh, the Warriors did it uh, February 24th and February 25th uh, of 2016. So uh, that'll do it uh, for tonight. Some final thoughts to you, my friend. 
Thanks for hanging out with us late. Uh, I've been looking at the numbers all night and especially on YouTube, pretty stable. So I, I was a test, like I said, to see how devoted you all were. And you guys passed A+. plus. We'll be right back at it tomorrow. And the reward is we get about three hours of radio. What do you say, J.D.? Yeah, great. Uh, thanks thanks to everyone who checked us out here tonight for the last hour and uh, stuck with us. Obviously, typically on earlier uh, in the evening, we will be back tomorrow uh, right at the final horn, 6.15, 6.30, roughly. And uh, we'll be taking you all the way until 9 o'clock and then uh, wrapping things up as far as this trip goes Friday and Sunday as well. And don't forget, just dubs Saturday back on the radio from 10 a.m. Until noon here on the Sports Leader. So for Greg, I'm JD. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Warriors got the win, 113 to 92. It's KMBR 1045 and 680. The Sports Leader. Play out of the corner. Oh, what a dunk! The spike from Kaminga has the bench going nuts. That's just like making a game winner. Rocket three. Curry three. Oh. Absolutely lit. I thought it was it was maybe the best game I've ever seen him play um, at both ends. Trace Jackson Davis. Oh! He put oh, the entire country of France in the basket. Take that eight foot wings, man, with you. <laughs> Some days I think about like homework in school, but then you know I got to look and then I don't have it. I love it. I love it. I love that guy so much. But Grant Williams got to stop it. Draymond is like. Fish sauce, big fat dub.